Hi, we are presenting a series of videos talking about centrifugal pumps and their electric motors. Here is a centrifugal pump and its electric motor. Centrifugal pumps are among the most used equipment in industry. In fact, perhaps they only lose the first place to the electric motors. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcos. I am a retired professor of hydraulics. Now I am a consulting engineer of many companies that deal with hydraulic supply to sanitation works. Here is a typical chart containing the characteristic curves of a pump. Usually, these charts present head versus flow curves for the maximum and minimum impeller diameters that this pump can contain. In another video, we saw how to obtain the head versus flow curves of an intermediate impeller. Also, in another video, we saw how to obtain the power curves demanded by the pump. And in another video, we saw how to obtain the efficiency curves of the pump. Today, we will focus on the required net positive suction head curves, or in short, NPSHR curves. How do we find them? If you don't observe this parameter, your pump will lose efficiency and will be severely damaged, its impeller and its casing. To understand what happens, let's remind ourselves of some concepts of water phase transition vaporization. Consider this vessel containing liquid water. When we heat it, in a few minutes, we'll see the formation of water vapor bubbles. Why does it happen? According to the kinetic molecular theory, Liquids and gases are formed of particles which are constantly moving from one place to another with a certain kinetic energy. The greater the energy, the greater will be the velocity of the particles. We could say that temperature is a way to measure this energy. The greater the temperature, the greater will be the kinetic energy of the particles. There will be situations in which a particle can overcome the intermolecular attraction forces and escape from the liquid state to the vapor state. In fact, this will happen to many particles. In many cases, they will escape to the atmosphere. The water level is becoming lower and lower until the vessel is empty. There is a way to stop it. We can put a lid on our vessel. There will be the formation of some vapor. But in time, the number of particles that passes from liquid to gas state will be equal to the number of particles that passes from gas to liquid state. We say that there will be a dynamic equilibrium. The volume of liquid and gas will remain the same. The vapor particles will collide with the walls of the vessel and its lid, as well as with the water surface. These collisions will cause the phenomenon that we call vapor pressure. Of course, the greater the temperature, the greater will be the vapor pressure. When the vapor pressure equals the pressure over the liquid, the water will boil. We must avoid the situation if we intend to pump water in its liquid state. There are two ways by which the water can be made to boil. The first is by heating the water. Its vapor pressure will be increased. When it reaches one atmosphere, the water will boil. The other way is by reducing the pressure over the water level. When it becomes equal to the vapor pressure, the water will boil. This is the situation we must avoid in our pumping installations. Now let's consider this pump with its suction and discharge pipes. This red line is the hydraulic grade line which represents the pressure variation along the flow and the head losses that occur. To find it, we add the atmospheric pressure to the pressures represented by the red line. The atmospheric pressure varies with the altitude. There is a head loss designed by each star, which we cannot calculate. It occurs inside the pump from its entrance to the center of the impeller. Only the manufacturer can tell its value. When the water reaches the center of the impeller, the pressure must be greater than the vapor pressure of the water or its state will be changed from liquid to vapor. If this happens, vapor cavities will form inside the pump. You will be suctioning liquid water no more, but a mixture of liquid and vapor. The efficiency of the pump decreases, and the impeller, designed to last years, will last only a few months because of the erosion caused by the cavitation phenomenon. 
Let's see how the manufacturers find the minimum positive suction head that the pump requires to avoid cavitation. This is our traditional installation for running pumping tests. We'll make a modification. Let's put the cover on the suction sump and install a vacuum pump on it. Let's begin our tests. We'll keep the flow constant. So, a corresponding head, equal to the difference between the manometer and the vacuum meter, will be established. OK, now let's turn on the vacuum pump. Since there is a vacuum in the suction sump, the hydraulic grade line will move down and again we must open a little the discharge valve to keep the manometer volume meter difference constant. Let's increase the vacuum in the suction sump. The hydraulic grade line will move down and again we must open a little the discharge valve to keep the manometer volume meter difference constant. Let's do the same again until the water vapor pressure is reached. How do I know it's been reached? It's simple. When the manometer vacuum meter difference turns to a value which is equal or inferior to 3% of the value that we were keeping, it means that cavitation has started. Why? Because from now on, you are no longer pumping only water. Vapor cavities are forming, so the pressure is relieved. Now we can write down in our report that, for the tested flow, the required NPSH is equal to the value registered by the vacuum meter. Repeat this test for at least five different flow values. That is how we get the NPSHR curve that we wanted. And so we have seen how each one of these curves was obtained. Then we can now simulate the installation of this pump in different hydraulic systems and obtain the corresponding operational results. But these are topics for our next videos. Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.